Folks, you're so welcome to Christmas carols at the drive-in. Flash me your lights. Beat me your horn. <laughs> well, we'll maybe not do that again in case the neighbors get angry, but we can flash your lights, which is great. Uh, my name is Michael Spence. I'm one of the ministers here at Movilla Abbey Church. And on behalf of the whole team, uh, I want to say that we are all so glad that you're here. Um, welcome if you come to Movilla Abbey Church every week. Um, welcome if you've been joining us online each Sunday. Welcome if you've not been with us since February. And welcome if you've never been here before. Um, those of you in your vehicles, you can get sound on your radios if you tune in to 87.6 FM. That's 87.6 FM, uh, you should be able to hear these beautiful voices uh, straight through your car speakers as well. Uh, those of you who are here on foot tonight, thank you so much for staying in your bubbles and keeping your masks on. Uh, even when our time is over and you're filing out, it is so important that you do that. Without that, we're not allowed to have this gathering. So thank you so much. You can find all the words you need tonight on your device if you log on to movillaabbeychurch.com. Um, some of you might have got paper copies on the way in. The other thing is, you'll probably know all the words, um, so that's great. But movillaabbeychurch.com has the words. If you need to use the toilet, you can make your way to the doors of our porch. That's the round white bit that kind of sticks out at the side there. Um, and when you're in the building, you, uh, wear a mask, please. Uh, we'll get some details off you so we know who's been in the building. And you need to keep two meters distance from others. Tonight, we are going to hear the story of, uh, of Christmas once more. We're going to sing carols. We're going to listen to these amazing musicians. This has not been the year that any of us wanted to have. Uh, for some of us, it's meant being shut away. For others, it's meant going into danger every day. Uh, for some, there has been terrible loss. We have experienced so many different shades of darkness. But the story of Christmas is the story of light coming into the darkness, of God putting on flesh and blood, walking alongside us. It's the story of God with us. It's a story of hope, hope for the restoration of all things, and a hope that begins with a transformation of the human heart. This is a story for all of us. Here is what one of God's prophets, Isaiah, said hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over David's, Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Meanwhile, in the depths of the Roman Empire, he who must be obeyed, Augustus Caesar, announces the big count-up. Caesar, the big cheeser, wants accurate population stats across the Roman Empire at the time when Quirinius is in the Syrian governor's mansion. Everyone is expected to trek back to their hometown for registration. 
So, Joe Davidson sets off on the 80-mile trip down the map from Nazareth, County Galilee in the north, crossing the border to Bethlehem, also known as Davidstown, and County Judah in the south. He takes his fiancée, Mary, who's pregnant and showing. Three, four, maybe five days later, they arrive and realize someone else is about to cross a border and arrive. Her water breaks. Crisis! No vacancy signs in every B&B &B window. Decision. Mary has a home birth in a livestock shed. She wraps strips of cloth round the baby and uses an animal feeding trough as a cot. night in amongst the other stars suddenly a bright new star appeared all of the stars in the dark vaulted heavens this one shone clearer it blazed in the night and made the other stars look pale beside it God put it there when his baby son was born to be like a spotlight shining on him lighting up the darkness showing people the way to him you see God was like a new daddy he couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all these long years for this moment. And now he wanted to tell everyone. So he pulled out all the stops. He'd sent an angel to tell Mary the good news. He'd put a special star in the sky to show where his boy was. 
and now he was going to send a big choir of angels to sing his happy song to the world. He's here, he's come, go and see him, my little boy. Now where would you send your splendid choir? To a big concert hall maybe, or a palace perhaps. God sent his to a little hillside, outside a little town in the middle of the night. He sent all those in angels to sing for a raggedy old bunch of, bunch of shepherds watching their sheep outside Bethlehem. In those days, remember, people used to laugh at shepherds and say they were smelly and call them other rude names, which I can't possibly mention here. You see, people thought shepherds were nobodies, just scruffy old riffraff, but God must have thought shepherds were very important indeed because they're the ones he chose to tell the good news to first. That night, some shepherds were out in open fields, warming themselves by a campfire, when suddenly a sheep darted. They were frightened by something. The olive trees rustled. What was that? A wingbeat? They turned around. Standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me. Don't be afraid of me. The right shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news for everyone everywhere. The angel told them that today in David's town in Bethlehem, God's son had been born. So they could go and see him. He is sleeping in a manger. Behind the angel, they saw a strange glowing cloud. Except it wasn't a cloud. It was angels, troops and troops of angels, armed with light, and they were singing in a beautiful song. Glory to God, to God be fame and honour and all our hoorays. Then, as quickly as they appeared, the angels left. The shepherds stamped out their fire, left their sheep, raced down the grassy hill through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobble streets, through a courtyard, down some steps, steps, more steps, past an end, round a corner, through a hedge, until at last they reached... A tumble-down steel. They caught their breath, then quietly they tiptoed inside. They knelt on the dirt floor. They had heard about this promised child, and now he was here. Heaven's son, the maker of the stars, a baby sleeping in his mother's arms. This baby would be like that bright star shining in the sky that night, a light to light up the whole world, chasing away darkness, helping people to see. And, and the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified. And not Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religion scholars in the city together and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judah territory. The prophet Micah wrote it. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader, who will shepherd rule my people, my Israel. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the east. Pretending to be as devout as they were, he got them to tell exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, Go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word and I'll join you at once in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They then entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. In a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod. So they worked out another route, left the territory without being seen, and returned to their own country. After the scholars were gone, God's angel showed up again in Joseph's dream and commanded, Get up! Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Stay until further notice. Herod is on the hunt for this child 
and wants to kill him. Joseph obeyed. He got up, took the child and his mother under cover of darkness. They were out of town and well on their way by daylight. They lived in Egypt until Herod's death. This Egyptian exile fulfilled what Hosea had preached. I called my son out of Egypt. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. 
children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. I was walking around a shop in mid-October, and because it was mid-October, I of course should not have been surprised to see the shelves stacked with Christmas lights and tinsel and baubles. And two people behind me were having a conversation, and I heard the older man mutter to the younger woman, there'll be no Christmas this year. There'll be no Christmas this year. I didn't know what to do. Part of me uh, felt so sad at how this pandemic had affected him. He sounded so defeated that I wanted to, to turn around there and then and cheer him on. You know, this hasn't beaten us. We can get through this. And another part of me wanted to turn around and give him a copy of Dr. Zeus's book, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which reminds us at the end that nothing can stop Christmas from coming. Without the feast, without the presents, without the roast beast, it came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. Now, I don't know how you're feeling tonight, but we know that a lot of people are really hurting, really anxious, really uncertain. But it is into this kind of world, hurting, anxious, and uncertain, that Jesus comes. That's the story of Christmas. Light in the darkness. See, the first Christmas was fraught with the danger and anxiety of childbirth. Two young parents, the subject of scandal, wandering without a place to put their heads. They escaped a genocide by fleeing as refugees to Egypt. I saw a post on Facebook that said, the first Christmas was quiet. It's all right if yours is too. The first Christmas was quiet. It's all right if yours is too. In fact, maybe this year we're a little closer to the story of Christmas than we've ever been before. If it's quiet, if we have to be careful, when we choose to be thankful and joyful in the middle of all of this, In fact, maybe current restrictions can even help us connect with Jesus more as we make difficult sacrifices to save the lives of those we love and strangers too and to protect our health service staff. Can we do that in the name of Jesus, the name of the one who left the glory of heaven for the animal feeding trough, all for love of us, the one who would go to the cross to save us? Uh, This morning, I was speaking to one of our team uh, at our worship gathering, uh, and she's a medical professional, and she said, I just need to share this. I just need to share this. This week, I did my first round of vaccinations. And to see those, uh, those frontline workers and those vulnerable people coming in and then sending them away vaccinated, it did something to me. It gave me so much hope. I felt like I was wrapping a blanket round each one of them and sending them out safe. She, she even described how the vaccine, the little glass vials, so fragile, so precious, not a drop was wasted. There's something of the story of Christmas in that, something small and fragile, something that gives us hope. 
The last thing I want to leave you with is uh, part of a poem that one of our Movilla Abbey Church family, Sheila, sent out to us on WhatsApp. And part of it said this, Christmas is not cancelled. And neither is hope. That's what we want to leave you with tonight. Whatever the next week looks like for you and the weeks after that, Christmas is not cancelled. And neither is hope. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, please uh, flash your lights to show appreciation for Diane and our musicians. That's very special. To Ken, who looked after all our safety measures. <clears throat> to all of our team who welcomed us and read for us. No, 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 people are sleeping. And a very special light flashing thank you uh, for Ian, who, uh, who... <laughs> Ian set this whole thing up. It wouldn't have happened without him. Uh, please stay in place. Uh, whether you're in a car or on foot, please stay in place until one of our teams shows you out safely. If you're on foot, to rem uh, please remember to keep two meters distance at all times. Have a very Merry Christmas. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. There we are.